Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Karina Lude Mental Gym. This channel is dedicated to leveling up in all areas of your life. So let us learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. Today's video will be a little controversial. Actually watch the video before you comment or have an opinion. And I've been thinking about this quite some time as I've been watching other content on the prize. I've in the past, in my previous channel, where I talked about femininity, spoke about being the prize a lot. And I want you guys to understand that I'm I'm not against you feeling like you are the prize. I'm not against you knowing that you are a prize. That's not what this video is. But I have noticed that it has some toxic aspects and it's becoming toxic now that it the art of being the prize is becoming mainstream. There are a lot of people that misconstrue what it means to be a prize in a relationship. This both relates to men and women. I think now it's becoming a gender war. It's becoming a gender war. Let's start first with my first point of why I think it's becoming toxic. One, it's allowing both genders to see each other in a competitive way. And what do I mean by that? Generally, to be the prize is to be confident in the relationship and in your, not just in an intimate relationship, but in your friendships and your relationships with families in general, is to be confident in who you are, to know that you are worthy, you are worth something, and that you deserve respect, you deserve to be loved correctly, and you deserve happiness and joy. And you do not tolerate anyone who comes and tries to take away your joy, your happiness, your peace, and your respect. That is what it means to be the prize, knowing when to walk away from situations that drain you, knowing how to walk away from people that misuse you, that does not respect you, and that does not honor you. That is what I feel it means. But in actuality, in their relationships, it becomes more like of a, they're the only ones that deserve respect. They're the only ones that deserve to be loved and treated correctly. Everyone else does not deserve that because they're the prize, you are beneath me. If I'm the prize, you're beneath me. You have to win me over. And one thing I wanna tell you to be careful about being the prize in that context is that once you are one, once someone wins a prize, a trophy, they put it up for everyone to see which is what they call a trophy wife right or a trophy husband <laughs> you take your awards and you put it up for everyone to see your trinkets you know you put them up people come and see hey you've won this you've conquered whatever it was that got you to get this prize now once you are conquered oftentimes they look for something else to conquer you know when you play this game if someone wins a gold medal their first gold medal they're gonna look at it and appreciate that first gold medal but then they're immediately gonna start training for the next gold medal for the next olympics if that makes sense okay you have to be careful with that in the game of the prize being difficult uh, hard to win and win over and playing uh these games with people you have to be very careful with that now with my first point of it becoming this sort of arrogance and cockiness is that with the male and female it becomes where you'll have a man that's like hey i have my phd i make good money i have no kids i'm single i pay my own bills i have a house i have a car i'm the prize <laughs> you as a woman should feel lucky and honored to have me and then they start to mistreat women they start to in a sense look at a woman like you're beneath me when you date a high value quote unquote man which i always told women you have to be careful with that also with dating a high quality man over a high value man because high value in the definitive terms of what society sees it today is a man with a lot of money or a man with a lot of assets and connections right but those people tend to not really be high quality people where they collect trophy wives <laughs> or trophy girlfriends and mistresses and they go and conquer the next and oftentimes they'll misuse you with their money they'll shackle you and imprison you with their money Money, their connections and what they can do for you and if they are aggressive in nature with you they have the connections to suppress your voice from speaking out vice versa with women now you have women with the prize that feels like on a first date you just met the guy and you feel entitled for him to not only start spending thousands of dollars on you but you feel entitled to a vacation after one week I see these um, 
Instagram posts and these tweets now that's like, oh, I need a vacation. I need this with a guy you just met. Like you just met the guy and you're already on vacation. Expect him to pick up the tab for everything. And if you have kids and you still feel like you're the prize, they should pay for babysitting for your kids and things that we don't necessarily deserve when we first meet someone. And it's being used as a sense to take advantage of men. And then when you speak up against that, you'll have women that will come and label you as pick me's. And I find that to be a judgment of character. It is a judgment of your character that when you're calling out abuse in either direction, whether with the male or female being, that people start to label you as a pick me and then you're getting dragged, but you're just calling out wrong. No one, if you have a son or a daughter regardless of what you have you wouldn't want no one to take advantage of them if I have a son I would not want any woman to just marry my son because of his money I would not advise my brother I have little brothers I would not advise any of them to be with a woman and in the first week you're already paying her rent you're already buying a new car and things like that no do not do that because then who you are as a person no longer matters to that person it's a very childish and immature ideology to have and a lot of people will understand that with age and experience but I understand and I, I'm sorry if I appear a little aggressive this topic really it can have you have your guard up if you're a content creator because you're almost expecting people to have some pushback because you see it all too often on on online and it, it's very triggering to see how people misuse these terms and these words to um, treat people badly and there's a lot of women when you hear them talk that when you hear them talk about relationships it's this guy wouldn't even spend money on me um, I was talking to him for X amount of time and he'll never buy me gifts and I love gifts and I love money and I love this it's like girl you said nothing about how he treated you personally and then when the guy leaves you and he doesn't want to be with you you're very confused you're like I don't know I'm good to everybody what do you mean by good if all you expected was materialism from him you know and then you'll find men, these quote unquote high value men or high earning men that will feel like they're the prize and she don't even want to give up the cookie after one week of talking to you. After one week of talking to you, she don't want to put out and you feel like you deserve better because you're the prize. You made X amount of money. You have this, that, and a third, or she's not cooking. She's not cleaning. I expect my wife when I come home to X, Y, Z, this and that, where it's no longer a partnership. And you feel like because many women would want you because of what you have, then you you deserve a slave in your home essentially you deserve a woman that's going to treat you i'll give you guys my own um experience when i was younger before all of this prize talk before i was even a youtuber there was this guy that i dated i think i told this story before in the past in one of my old videos that are probably gone now from my other channel is that he told me straight up after we weren't never in a relationship it was just a long courtship he told me straight up that he wants his woman to propose to him, that I would have to propose to him. Even when it came to dates, he would say, I never ask him out on dates. <laughs> he was a very, um, and I don't mean to label with that, but me, I'm a very traditional girl where I love the traditional masculine energy and I don't want to change that everybody have their preference if we're going on a date you're asking me on a date unless we're in a relationship if I'm your girlfriend we are together I have no problem setting up a date for us you know and and treating you vice versa but as we are dating I want that traditional masculine energy you ask me out and yeah, you cannot just be sitting here, you're courting me, and then you're like, you don't ask me out on dates, you don't, so we're never gonna go on a date if you don't ask me. It's very feminine energy to me. So I already wasn't interested in that, but the proposal aspect, saying you would want your girl to propose to you, and he said he feels like he's a catch. And granted, he was one of these men in our community that was very well known, and he was, um, a lot of girls did want him, you know? It was the era of of, you know, I don't know. I don't know what to say, but he had a lot of girls, you know, vying for his attention. So he felt like I should be lucky <laughs> that he was interested in me or talking to me. When I tell you I paid this man dust, he had to go through so many avenues to try to talk to me, befriend my own friends, try to get in good with my family. And it just would not happen. I'm like, I see who you are and I'm not going to be with someone like that. Okay. It, it has to be equal. I'm not your girl. Why, what are you expecting from me? Are you crazy? Are you nuts? 
And it's the same I see with people of today. Like you're not in a relationship with the guy. What are you expecting from him? I'm the type that goes to extremes on a first date where I always have my cards with me. I don't automatically assume the guy is going to pay. It would be lovely, nice, maybe gentlemanly for him to pay if he offered me out, but I always never expect it or would require it or feel entitled to it. And I know many people won't agree with that because it's very out out there for them like no absolutely not you must pay I'm still that doesn't take away from my femininity or who I am for being prepared and understanding that I'm not entitled to anyone's pockets that didn't work for I'm not your wife I'm not your wife I'm not your long-term girlfriend I'm just going to have lunch with you I didn't come here for a free meal either. I came here to get to know you. And dating has become a sport to where now people, a lot of women in the industry on pedestals for, you know, dating around and there's nothing with dating around privately and quietly and getting to know each other, but it's becoming an aesthetic. Dating is an aesthetic now. It's not to get to know the person. It's making sure you have someone that looked the part and that have the money and then that you can go on these trips with and you can go on vacations with that it's an aesthetic. And it's it sucks even if you're like well if you like someone like me who's my life is on well not my life but you know I'm online I you're watching my video obviously it can you can even find yourself as being an aesthetic to somebody where someone wants to go on a date with you because of who you are or the aesthetics of it all you know and you can kind of tell that where it's like do you want to get to know me do you want to get to know what my favorite books are or what my ideologies and philosophies on certain things are like religion things that's going to impact us you know it's becoming more of a who deserves what and it's just becoming very very toxic and it's allowing everyone to feel so arrogant and so cocky and one thing I'll say and I always bring God into everything you guys just gonna have to deal with that now but one thing like the Lord talks about humility a lot even with Moses and just you know knowing that you know nothing the Lord wants us to see every man is better than ourselves it's not to shame ourselves and to lower ourselves but we are should not put ourselves above people like we're better than people there was also this gentleman that he was really deep into astrology i've since let you know i've been freed from all those things it used to be a problem for me but he used to be like oh i'm a scorpio so I, I, i'm better than everybody else <laughs> i'm better than everybody else you know i know he'd say that bluntly like he i i know i'm smarter than everybody else he'll say that his birthday was really close to mine and so I was like I, I don't feel like that so what does that you know uh, anyways it just was interesting to see how someone can feel this way they it, you narcissism when someone if you start in a relationship with someone who already thinks they're a prize you're with someone who is already showing you that they will be narcissistic in the relationship and they will have no regards to your feelings or emotions. They will always feel entitled and it's a red flag. It's a major red flag. I don't like anyone to expect anything. If I'm going on a date with you, don't expect anything from me and I won't expect anything from you. We're not transactional, which with the prize culture is making every relationship almost transactional. It's like, what can you do for me? Because I'm up here and you're down here and it's not like a mutual um, like I said there's people that understand how being a prize in the positive context but there's people also that sees it as like what can even in their friendships like what can you do for me there's been people that you'll I'll talk to that'll be like I can't be friends with this person because they can do nothing for me which is not always the right ideology to do now i'm not saying to have toxic lazy bummy friends that's not what i'm saying i always advocate for you to have friends in all genres of life but do not become friends with people for what they can do for you that is oh my goodness i can't express it enough how toxic that is to see someone and be like oh yeah this person has this connection let me get in good with them let me keep this person around although deep inside you don't like them you will never initiate anything with them you won't talk to them like that about they don't know nothing about you i i've noticed i'm i'm grateful thank god my circle is very 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 small right now with my friends okay it's my friends on one hand 
that I'll say that are close where we know the ins and outs of each other. They know what bothers me. I know what bothers them. We pray for each other. We have conversations on each other's lives that are more helpful, deeply intimate. I know you and it's not an aesthetic. Some people are friends with people for an aesthetic because they look away. It's going to look good on their Instagram pictures. I'm not sure if you guys recall when that uh, young rapper Erica Banks said that she since apologized and took it back. But if you go into the club with her being her friend, there's a way you have to look. Your lace got to be on. If she don't look how I want her to look physically, I don't want her to come because the look of everything is so important to me. Like if she ain't thick enough, nope. Her not did good enough, nope. Can't dress, nope. <laughs> uh, skinny, nope. <laughs> and it's like, I don't feel like I'm discriminating. I just want a certain type of look. She don't look the part. I don't want her to come. Like, that's just not the vibe I'm on. Now, she can come to the cookout. She can come to the listening party. But the club, I feel like gotta look a certain way right some people won't even repost their friends on their stories because they don't look the part or they won't follow someone or they don't like someone to um they won't respond to people online that are close with them every day because they're embarrassed by their aesthetic or how they look see what that is doing to us and we feel like we're such up here we're such the pride we're the prize friend we're the beyonce of the family which is the quote unquote thing people used to like to say is like i'm the beyonce in the family so when i come in da, 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 or you know the bougie auntie that comes in with like all her designer bags and stuff where well, there's nothing wrong with having your aesthetic but when you're now saying i can't hang with these people because they look terrible or they have too much acne or they're not smart enough they're not connected enough you starting to choose your friends based on an aesthetic and not the content of their character you're not looking like this person is very patient or this person um is very morally sound or this person is always happy and just a good person yeah she's great but her lace does not be sitting right i can't be friends with her do you guys see what the problem is? There's become, on Instagram, it starts with these girls, uh, you know, the influence girls that all look good and so they go on their vacations together and trips. Everyone wants to mimic that. And they start to, there's been many people that went viral on TikTok with that same ideology of wanting a friend that looked like their aesthetic. And it's all becoming so toxic. And like I said, it's been a while. I've just been watching everything and just feeling a ways about it, which you guys have noticed. I strayed away when from my other channel. I just now leave that channel for strictly celebrity documentaries. And then this one is more mental gems, book clubs, growth, professional growth, finance, because I felt like at the time when I was doing femininity content, I, I had it all screwed up and skewed. There's things I said that I was not proud of that I'm like, yeah, mm, 10 years from now, I'm gonna look back at this and be cringe because what the heck are you talking about? What is is this and it was cultivating it, it was re removing that essence of growing and elevating yourself mentally as a person and more looking on the physical and what you look like how you you know what your etiquette and this and that and those things do trigger me they do trigger me now that I've I've been doing the work and that I've been getting closer to God I've been reading books and understanding that you know I was fast going down this track of judging people from their outer appearance or their status and the whole hypergamous movement movement became you can absolutely not date someone who makes even average income or decent income everyone wants a millionaire everybody won't settle until they get a millionaire or a billionaire or the richest man that was becoming the goal and someone who makes um uh, even six figures is no longer a big deal like you need to make seven figures you know it was becoming an issue i saw tiktok someone said oh i cannot survive on four hundred thousand dollars a year and i'm like what it was becoming that the man has to make more than four hundred thousand dollars a year for her to date him and what was she making she was making like 27 27 thousand dollars a year but this is what you want why don't you become the person that you want to attract if you i always look at women and men alike that men would be like oh i want a girl who's a virgin are you a virgin you done slept with half the town why would I want to sully my purity for you when you've sullied half the time? Like you took advantage of so many girls. You want a girl who's a homebody. Oh, I love them homebody girls. Are you home all the time? You at the club every weekend. 
You never sit at home. You're always in these streets. You're for the street. Why would you want that? Why would you want me who have peace at home to be with somebody who's never going to be home with me, who's going to always try to get either get me to go out or you're always going to try to go out and not be around me. You want somebody who um, makes six figures, but you make two figures. <laughs> None. <laughs> Come on. Come on, sis. <laughs> You want someone who keeps themselves well. You want to, that, the audacity for me is when you have a heavier set man. Like I do the breakdowns for the starlets and like Cone and all the other men from the studios would tell these beautiful starlets like Marilyn Monroe, Rita Hayward, all of these gorgeous women like the Dorothy Dandridge that they were too fat or their teeth was too big and this. And then you looked at them and they're sloppy, big, look like a potato. And you're like, sir, you barely have hair on top of your head, but you're, you know, telling the woman what you need. Do you look like what you want to attract? Some of us are average and we're trying to attract people that are beyond average. We want the best looking man in the world. We want the best looking woman in the world. We want the person with the best job. We want the biggest house. Everybody just wants the best and it's not realistic and it's okay to be. And I know it's harder, it's easier said than done, but I, I have learned and I am continuing to learn the power of humility and the power of being meek. Like the Lord said, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. That he says that for a reason. The power of not always wanting to be on top. And I know it's easier said than done because from childhood we were just around competition. We were taught to be competitive, to be the best in our class, to have top grades and whether it's in school, um, even competing if you have siblings for your parents' affection, to be the favorite. You know, women compete for relationships, men compete. Like it's a very competitive market. And so you want to be above average to set the bar a little bit higher for yourself so that you can have an advantage in life. So when someone like me comes and tell you that it's okay to remove yourself from that game, that is the book club that I did on the courage to be disliked where he talks about it. once you stop competing you free yourself from being in that competitive world you not only become more humble but accepting of reality and it's chill like you remove yourself from that trap of having to be such a prize there will always be someone that looks better than you that speaks better than you that has better character than you more discipline that's more beautiful, that's more fit, that has more money, there will always be someone better than you throughout history. You will never be the best. Even if in your lifetime you're the best, how many goals that we saw people from 100 years ago <laughs> that, hey, the person who ran the fastest was da 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 da, and then 10, 50 years later, someone comes and beat that goal or that that time or something you know that will always be oh this book is the best seller right now you never know who's gonna bring a new book star wars was the highest movie of all time or was it gone with the wind and then you have black panther that came and that it's equally right there and there's still years to come for people to watch that movie but I guarantee you there will be other movies after Black Panther that might become the number one movie in the world there will always be even in the future competitors that will come and try to be the best and you will never be, be the best-selling recording artist of all time right now but there will be someone that outsells you in the future. And this is where you become humble. You're like, right now, I'm gonna do the best I can. Do the best you can. I'm not gonna aim to have a C and be average just because I know, you know. I'm gonna do the best I can, but at the same time, when I do get that A, I'm not gonna use it as like, oh, look, once I'm summa cum laude, or I graduated honors, or I was in AP class. When I was in high school, I remember all the AP class, all the IB classes, we used to take AP writing or something. We were in IB, which is International Baccalaureate. Ugh, this was so long ago, I can't forget. But we all started ninth grade up until senior year all together. It was all the same. And I went to a historically black high school. We were the first high school to be in Orlando, in the state of Florida, I believe, to for blacks only. That was open. People had to walk for miles and miles to come, okay? Uh, we even had, I forgot his name, uh, this celebrity. <laughs> I forgot his name, but I'll show you the picture. He graduated from our school, Jones High School. So they just had the IB program 
a year before I came to the school and I left middle school straight into that. And middle school, I was a horrible student. High school, I wasn't the best either. I couldn't tell you how many classes I done failed, but I was always writing in a next level. You know, I was in those classes and I remember just as a teen, everyone else in the class, like we'd only eat lunch with each other. We would all be playing the same sports. We would all be like, if there was a debate team, it was all the IB kids on the debate team. We like, we were like a clique and most of us, and I'll, I'll be honest, I was part of that crew that we did look down at other kids that wasn't in the IB program. Even if you was failing a class, I told you I was speaking French, but failed French. <laughs> Oh man, I did not like school, granted to say. So it's always a shock I'm here now reading books, very studious. But we did look down at other kids and we didn't really want to hang with them like that in high school. We really didn't want to hang out because we're like, what are you not getting? You know, you feel like you're up there until some of us, a lot of us got rude awakenings when it was time to take a SAT, ACT, when it was time to do it. I was also in the AVID program, which was like for um, college bound kids and stuff. And a lot of people got humbled on our senior year. It was towards the end of junior year, people started feeling humbled because you started, you really started applying and prepping and knowing which college you was gonna go to your junior year. And by senior year, there was a lot of humility, a lot of humility. Because you couldn't cheat your way on the SATs. It was, mm, 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 mm. We also had something in Florida called the FCAT, which was, oh, which kicked a lot of our butts. And a lot of people was humbled I'm telling you and I was one of those people that was humbled <laughs> so it, it goes to say that by the time you get to college oh, I was in college my college had um adults in there that were 40 50 that was taking the same class as me that was doing that and I remember taking an accounting class and oh I felt that I took that class probably three times on the third try was when I got a decent grade but my first one I was like what the heck this is not what I thought it was and there were adults there that had experience that just knew more than me and it was very humbling um, to even talk to these people about their experiences and things and I say this to say that like we even as kids we're cocky and we thought we were the prize and I be, but then life humbles you quick. A lot of you that think you're the prize, you're gonna be humbled when another girl thinks she's the prize too. And now all of y'all competing for that same man, but y'all sitting back waiting for him to chase you. And watch he goes after the most humble. You ever seen somebody marry somebody? You'd be like, why her? Why him? People mature and they start to date according to the contents of a person's character. Okay, they're no longer dating just based on uh, the outside anymore. I don't know. I know this was unpopular, but I want you guys to comment your thoughts. This is what I feel on the subject, and I know many of you guys will disagree with me, but this is what I feel. Okay, this is my opinion. You're allowed to have yours in the comment section. Share this video if you may. If you like the music, you're listening to the link is in the description. I love you guys so much. Until next time. Mwah.